Hey, young people. Let's talk DNA and uh, how they caught this serial killer with these online profiles um, where basically you're paying somebody to store your DNA. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Eh, it depends. I think that little connection right there is the ball gene, which causes cops to beat up people. But I digress. Let's talk about DNA and this evidence. So the AP, uh, actually, San Francisco Gate wrote this with their lying fake media trying to confuse people. AP news break, serial killer led to wrong man. Oh, serial killer search led to wrong man. Wow, I thought they caught the guy with DNA. They did. But in this article, it goes in about how they were hunting down for serial killer and they found a 73-year-old man that they linked to some nursing home. And they got, uh, it says they were working to persuade a judge. I guess persuade a judge is liberal talk for probable cause and having a DA review a warrant and then taking that warrant to a judge. I guess in liberal land that means they tried to persuade a judge to get a court order for a DNA sample. And evidently they swabbed the dude and it, was, it wasn't the right guy. So they, it was basically, we need to eliminate him as a suspect. So we swabbed him. He's not the guy. Now we move on. If we don't get the DA, he's already connected through a DNA trait. And if we don't get his to confirm it's not him, we can't move on. So I, I don't have a problem with this, especially if they're out getting warrants. Now, in this case where they they went after the uh, the cop, uh, this guy was a, a cop at some little small town. I didn't, I, man, I don't know. I was... California. I don't know how many damn years. I never even heard of this town. But anyway, he was a cop there, and other cops said that he uh, he he wasn't very laughable and he wasn't friendly, and he didn't laugh or crack jokes. He was very serious. And I've known a few cops like that. Most cops, man, we're dealing with so much BS. We're always cracking jokes, even though they're crude, rude, and mean. We sound like a a bunch of mean people, but. It's just a way to deal with the constant negative looking over your shoulder, possibly getting sued, possibly having to kill somebody, possibly going to domestic violence and being your last call. I mean, watching your buddies die, go to a funeral. It, it all wears on you, and so we kind of get a sixth sense of humor sometime. But anyway, uh, this cop, this killer, this rapist who used to be a cop, didn't say how long he was a cop, didn't say if he got fired as a cop, but anyway... He was a cop. Somebody accused me of covering that up. I didn't even know he was a cop. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm going to cover up if a cop does something wrong. Look at my damn videos, you freaking idiots. Uh, so they suggested that, you know, th they thought these investigators did a really good job, I think, of thinking outside the box. And in somewhere in this article, it says that they, instead of getting a warrant, they followed the guy. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, in this article, I'm just go down this article here, and I'll run across it here, but... So they use the DNA, and some people are saying it's legal and privacy concern because people submit their DNA to these sites to discover their heritage. And now the police are using it. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence on this. And like I said, most law, it depends, and it goes back and forth um, on, on how much power is too much and how is it used and when can it be used. And can we trust government to only use it for, the, for catching bad guys like this? Or can we trust government to abuse the power and end up to use it to check DNA on Trump's lawyer's attorney's couch to see who was sitting on Trump's account? I mean, when does government go overboard? And that's the problem. And in strict liberal fashion, the public defender, who are all liberals, they think there's not enough strong policy laws or privacy laws that stops people from trolling these sites. Now, she's calling it trolling. I call it good police work. Cops know that there's possible evidence out there. They find a way to get it legally, and it catches a serial killer. I don't have a problem with that. Should they have gotten a warrant? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. So in the article, they kind of keep throwing 23andMe and Ancestry.com under the bus. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of this. I was thinking of getting my DNA done, but I've done some research on it. And there's a company that seems like it's a little more expensive it's a hundred bucks and i think ancestors like 59 or 49 or whatever but 
they only do it by numbers and your your thing can be destroyed after you get it if you tell them to destroy it they will absolutely destroy it they won't keep it and then it's up to you now ancestry and 23 i don't think give you that option they may i haven't really checked in with that much because i've heard so much negative about these two but they're kind of mentioning these two like they caused this and they gave up i don't think they did the cops used a little tricky website that was pretty cool called ged match and GED Match, Florida-based web company. And if you go to their website, it's a simple, you give an email and a password and you log in. No money, no nothing. And then if you're looking for people to match your ancestry or to see, put your DNA out there in a the public so other people that are related to you or connected to you can find you, you log in here, you upload your DNA information, and they make it publicly available for other people who want to log in and find DNA. So if I'm looking for a long lost great great grandmother's sister's uncle's cousin, I can stick my DNA in here and then other people will get matches and will do searches and we may be able to connect with somebody that I didn't know was a distant relative. This is a voluntary site. What the cops did, they created a password and an email and they logged in. And they put the DNA information of the suspect in here. And by gosh, they got a hit and said, the person's DNA that you uploaded is connected to this person. And they went, ah, that's a clue. If we can find that person, then we can find his relatives or who lives there or who he knows or who's connected to him that lives in the Sacramento area where these crimes are committed and we can focus on that person now has a suspect and try to get his DNA to see if we can get an exact match. And I think they're not saying it, but I think that's pretty much what they did. So because if you go to that DNA GED match, it's a free website. They are allowed to upload your data to other commercial websites like Ancestry and 23 Me, and that expands your search. Because now you have access to all it. If I do my Ancestry.com and I put my DNA there, they may not, I may not pick up a relative who did it in this company or who did it in a different company. So all these companies are connected. So they want to have some sort of sharing so they can have one better complete database. Well, GED allows people to upload their own G DNA if they want to share it and do that. And people do that. Now, this key little statement right here at the bottom, major companies do not allow law enforcement access to their genetic data unless they get a court order. That's very misleading because somebody that's not real smart will say, oh, that's good. They don't give it to law enforcement. Somebody that understands the legal system said, hell, yeah, they'll give it to law enforcement. All law enforcement has to do is get a court order. Actually, I don't even think they need a court order. If they file charges on somebody, they can get it with a subpoena. The DA can issue a subpoena, which is a court order. It's just not a search warrant. It's got a lot, lot of standards. You don't have to do a PC deck to, do, to issue a subpoena. You just say, give me this information. I, I'm, a, I'm an officer of the court. I'm the DA's office. I'm prosecuting. Give me the info. Doesn't need a, Subpoenas do not need a judge review. Only needs a DA to say, I want it. So when it says companies will not allow law enforcement access to their data, that's actually false. So, I mean, again, I, I don't like things like this that kind of prey on stupid sheep and, you know, for people that aren't educated enough. Uh, again, unethical media reporting. They don't work for the people. They don't help the people. They basically confuse the people, and who's ever writing it pushes their agenda. So this suspect, um, D'Angelo, I guess, uh, worked for three, three decades, 30 years in a Sacramento area warehouse trucking mechanic, retired last year. Neighbor said he was meticulous care of his lawn. Um, worked as a police officer in the town of Extra. So this town's a pretty small town. In 2010, the population was 10,000. Back in the 70s, it was probably 1,000. Um, so we're not talking a major city with a bunch of cops here. That somebody be looking he probably knew somebody that knew somebody and said hey man we need a cop nobody wants to work out here in this one horse town so uh you want to be a cop okay here's your badge and gun so uh you know people want to make out that oh he was a cop well 
I mean, he was a cop, yeah. Did he know? Did he have special training? Could he have used his job? Yeah, but I mean, to me, that's irrelevant. They caught the guy, and and they used DNA, which I think is a good move. And I guess further down the article, D'Angelo later joined Auburn Police Department, which is a little bit bigger uh, outside of Sacramento, but he was fired in 79 because he was caught shoplifting a hammer and dog repellent. So all the people that say cops, they don't, they protect their own, they, look, if they catch a cop stealing or doing things, they're fired. Uh, cops that go under the radar usually do most things right, and they just, you know, mess up. But I'm I'm not here to defend cops. I mean, shit, I don't give. Uh, most cops hate dirty cops. They don't they don't want them in the career field because things like this happen, and it, you know, it reflects bad on cops. But you know, uh, other groups always want to protect their group at all cost because we have to stick together. So I mean, all groups stick together. Anyway, let's get back to this DNA. Again, Ancestry and 23 both said, hey, we don't release to authorities unless they receive a court order. Court order is a subpoena or a search warrant. A spokesman said, we, uh, which is also a search for a uh, general public, said the company was not in contact with authorities on this case. So these companies are really trying to distance themselves from this case because they don't want people thinking, oh, you're going to give away my information. Look. If cops know it exists, they can get it. They just got to be able to state a probable cause on how to get it. But if your DNA is out there, if you've ever had it tested for a blood test, if you've given blood, if you've had blood taken, somebody's got your DNA. Uh, I mean, and now that Obamacare and the government's in the healthcare system, it's only a matter of time till they say, we need your DNA to protect you. Just give us your DNA and we'll keep you safe. And then all the idiots will be, flocking into hospitals, giving their blood away like they do their guns. But I digress. All right, GED Match is over me. So GED Match makes people allow you to search. Uh, <clears throat> somewhere I read that the cops didn't get a warrant. And I wanted to cover that. And for some reason, I can't find it. So here they're saying people who submit to DNA for, you know, ancestors testing, etc., cetera, are unwilling becoming genetic informants on they're innocent family. Well, first of all, if your family's out there killing and raping people, I I don't think they're innocent. And to be honest, if my DNA leads you to someone in my family doing crime, I don't care. My bigger problem is how can government abuse authority and power when you give it to them? That's why you have to constantly restrain government, keep it small, put controls, make sure there's checks and balances. I don't have a problem with government catching bad people. I got a problem with government abusing their authority and becoming the bad person with information and power. That's the problem. Okay, for some reason I can't find where they didn't get a court order for his DNA, so I'm going to explain why they didn't do that in case somebody reads it or somebody puts it out later. So they say that they could have got a search or they could have tried to get a search warrant to get the suspect's DNA. But instead, they chose to follow him and catch him discarding something that contained his DNA. When it was discarded, they grabbed it, tested it, and that's how they confirmed his DNA was an exact match. Now, when I say exact match, I mean like 99.9. .9. I don't think they have a 100% match, but it's 99.9, .9, whatever. So, and when you get 99.9 .9 and some billion strains or whatever that's pretty much 100 percent. but anyway they didn't get a search warrant and the reason why is taking someone's dna is a intrusive thing and if they resist and say no you've got to have a pretty strong case to convince a judge to compel when i say compel by force hold the guy down if you have to and stick a swab in his mouth and make him give it up so because that's so intrusive a lot of cops don't go for that warrant. I mean, unless it's a huge public safety, I, I'm trying to think. I know I've done a, a few DNA warrants, but I think they were on dead bodies or relatives that were, weren't were resisting or something. I can't, I don't ever think I got a DNA warrant to where we could compel and hold the guy down and forcibly take it. And if this guy knows he's guilty, he's not going to volunteer. And when they come at him and go, hey, man, we'd like you to volunteer, he's going to say, hell no. So what they do is they follow him because everybody will use a fork, will eat half of a burger and throw it in the trash. I mean, I can follow anybody 
in any given day, and I'll have their DNA within a few hours uh, or something that contains their DNA. And that's how these cops got this guy's DNA. Is that wrong? I, I don't think it's wrong. I'm okay with that. Uh, do you want to be followed by government and have them snagging things? I, I guess you could argue that's a little intrusive, but if government has a reason to focus on you and to do that, I mean, if you're not doing anything wrong, I, I don't like using this analogy because that's what people say, you know, well, if you don't have anything to hide, let the cops search you. I don't like allowing cops to search my house or my car just because I'm not doing nothing wrong because then I don't make them go through the hoops. They get to fish. They'll find something, you know, kind of like they're going through Trump's lawyer's office. They're just looking for anything. It has nothing to do with Russian probe. They're looking for a hooker in a porn store who, who said she had sex with them. I mean, that, they're just looking for anything. That's why I don't like volunteering with government. But if I throw away a burger and the government wants to go grab that and take my DNA, if I'm that concerned about it, then I can either eat the whole burger or don't throw it away or burn my trash or, I mean, trash is the greatest thing in the world that people, the courts have ruled, once you throw it away, it becomes public domain. You lose your right to privacy. You lose your standing to claim that you have privacy rights over trash that you either throw in a public dumpster or you set outside for a public dumpster to come pick it up and move it to a public dump site. You lose your right to privacy. So trash is like a treasure trove of evidence that you don't need a warrant and that people have abandoned their right to privacy. Uh, I think this is a pretty good case. I think the cops did a smart thing. I think they use the DNA good. If you want to put your DNA out there in a public database for other people to find you, well, then you got to expect that government or somebody working a case is going to go, hey, I got this DNA. Here's a whole million database of DNA. What the hell? Let me check it. I might find a relative. That relative may lead me to a brother or sister who had a cousin who lived in the area of these crimes about the time was committed, and that will give me probable cause to focus on this girl, follow him, grab some DNA on when he throws away and test it, and then I eliminate another suspect. I don't think this is equivalent to cops out on a Saturday night trying to violate people's rights and to harass people. In this case, the problem I have is if we allow government to do this and say this is normal, when will government take that inch by inch by inch to now they're following you because you're running for office or they're following you because you're making sense about the crazy liberal left agenda or they're following you because you're against open borders or they start following you to get dirt on you because you're against you know the liberal left agenda that's my problem with this it's it's a scale uh good and bad everybody can argue it out in the comments but i'm okay with this